for listening to Buttersworth Brigade, the only podcast that can be found on the internet. Welcome to the first podcast ever for Buttersworth Brigade. I am Ryan, and let me introduce you to my fantastic co-hosts. We have Eli. Good evening. Hello, Eli. And Andrew. Who, me? Yes, you. Now, uh, to start it off here, I think we should talk about a little bit about what Buttersworth Brigade really is. Who wants to talk about it? Who, um, Who feels that they can describe what we do? the best you're up ryan great all right fantastic now um we are a a couple of gamers here and we figure hey we're gonna make a podcast we're gonna be talking about games we're gonna be talking about some other things too i'm sure and um yeah i mean that that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing here i want to correct you on one thing what is that um there's actually three of us last time i counted so we're not a couple of gamers we're three gamers yeah you're a couple of gamers and then i'm yes correct you you're absolutely right here um okay fantastic any anyone else want to correct me while we're at it or are we are we good exactly (laughs) well i I could go on but (laughs) okay fantastic well it is january 1st today while recording this so we figured, why don't we take a look back at this holiday season in gaming and sort of just talk about what we felt, uh, what went on, you know, just, just everything in general that happened in the last couple of months. Um, why don't we start out here earlier in the season uh, with Battlefield 3. Uh, Battlefield. What do you guys think? How would Battlefield go? I only played the beta, but yes. what I played was really fun. Uh, I wanted to get it. But no one else really did in my uh, little real-life friend group, so it okay. kind of didn't make any sense to play a multiplayer game by myself. So we ended up getting Modern for 3 instead. Okay. Computer. Yes, that is that is absolutely true. Uh, Andrew, you I know you don't actually play that... Well, you play first-person shooters, but you're not a multiplayer kind of guy. Um, w- w- did Battlefield 3 interest you at all? No. <laughs> 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 I can All tell right. you I can tell you one thing. Uh-huh. It certainly looks like the other Battlefield games I've seen. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, okay. That's that's a fair assessment. That's fair. Um I had played Battlefield uh, Bad Company 2. Mm-hmm. It was definitely okay. It didn't have so much lasting power between our, our group of friends playing and um it, the, the single player wasn't horrible, but um Battlefield well, 3 it was pretty well, bad. Well, it, it, it it was, it was okay. all right. It wasn't terrible. It was just it was there. It existed. It, it yes. The the single player did exist. Uh, it had some interesting, fun game modes. Some horrible maps. Uh, it was a good break. <laughs> it was a great break from uh, Call of Duty. Oh, but Ken um, now. <laughs> I I'm not so sure that a game can constitute itself as a break from another game. It needs to hold itself up. And after playing the beta for Battlefield Three, I just thought this is Battlefield Bad Company. I'm not going to spend my money. But um, I've heard some decent things. It's gonna have. I think the outcome is going to be very similar. Um, the long-term outcome is going to be similar to Bad Company too. Um, but yeah, uh, that's Battlefield. I'm that's... really glad we spent this time talking about a game none of us has played. I think. <laughs> we played the beta. <laughs> look, yeah, dude, <laughs> look, Battlefield's up there alphabetically, and it's up there for when it came out. So Fair you enough. sit down. Got you there. Now, uh, next in the alphabet comes Assassin's Creed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Assassin's Creed Um, another game none of us have actually played I think I own it oh yeah you (laughs) one round of multiplayer at a friend's house that was fun right multiplayer Um, as far as I can tell Assassin's Creed is Brotherhood and Assassin's Creed 2 but with a new name 2.5.5 yeah 2.5.5 other than that it's 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 Assassin's Creed it's probably pretty good um (laughs) I heard, um... We're just Desmond a wealth of information. Ezio's faces look very strange. Ezio's faces look strange. Um, or so Desmond, although he always looked kind of weird. Yeah, that game... 
it's 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 a neat game. Maybe it's overliving itself. I'm not so sure. Um, I think you see this that is now. Wait until Assassin's Creed Three. <laughs> What's I, that? Yes, Andrew. Uh, Sorry. I think the I think Ezio is overliving himself. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm glad that this is the last Ezio game because I'm kind of sick Agreed. of him. Agreed. I think Assassin's Creed is good, but yeah, Ezio. They sort of. I think Assassin's Creed 2 really worked, and then they're like, yeah, let's let's keep going. Even though, yeah. I mean, that's not a fair judgment. Um, there was clearly going to be more Ezio games just from when Assassin's Creed 2 came out. I mean, like, the whole plot, sort of. I, I, I definitely liked Ezio a lot better than Altair. Altair was just yeah. a dick. He was just so not likable. <laughs> and then Ezio I, was just, like, funny and uh, not really, not necessarily witty, but he was at least, like, comical which gave him points. Yeah, I can, uh, I can agree with that. Um, but Desmond was just... Yeah, Desmond's so... Desmond. Um, yeah. Okay, I think that's... We don't have the game, so I think that's a reasonable <laughs> <laughs> thing, to, thing to end on. Um, Batman, Arkham City. Oh, um, great pick. Another, another, another great, great pick. Great pick. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're going through it. We didn't get it for... Actually, you have it. Um, I've heard it's fantastic. That's all I have to say about Batman. Yep. Anyone else? <laughs> um. God, who wrote this list? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, let's go down to Saints Row and Rage. All right, um, those what? are more games we haven't played, but um, I'm sure they're fine. Now on to stuff that we have played. Gears of War three. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Okay, we haven't played this either, but I heard if you hate Modern Warfare, Gears of War is fantastic. Um, it's Gears of War 3, from what I've seen, is Gears of War, and um, doesn't interest me is all I have to say about that. If anyone what likes I've heard Gears about of War... Gears of War 3 is that it, um, the multiplayer in Gears of War 2, a lot of people complained about. They didn't yep. like it. They said that really deviated from the fun that Gears of War 1 was, and what I heard is that Gears of War 3 fixes that, so it's a lot closer to Gears of War 1, people like it, and the campaign is actually really interesting, and you, they make, they manage to make you care about the characters, Okay. which is kind of uncommon for a game where the people are dressed in cars and curb stomp bugs, so I thought that was good. Yeah, that, that definitely sounds um, good. Andrew, you're the only one who owns it. What do you have to say about it? <laughs> the box looks good. Good. <laughs> the, um, great. Glad to hear. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now let's move on to Modern Warfare 3. Uh, Modern Warfare 3 is pretty much... Um, Modern Warfare I, 2. But I, think it, I think it has a bad... A, it, it, Modern Warfare leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth now, I think. Just the name, just saying it, just just is a little. You have a little disdain towards it. Um, I I own it. The game is pretty good. I'll I'll admit. Uh, the multiplayer is fine. Everything is pretty much just fine with it. Um, Call of Duty, I think, is is on its last leg. I think people are keep gonna continue buying it, but I think everyone who loved Call of Duty four. Um, and was, like, really into Call of Duty. I think it's slowly dying, but I think new people are coming in and buying Call of Duty. So I don't think the franchise is going to be over anytime soon. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, I think they're definitely going to be continuing... They're going to continue to sell copies, and I don't think the game is going to continue to get better. Yeah. Um, I think Modern Warfare 3 is going to be the last Call of Duty I buy. Um... I think Black Ops should have been the last Call of Duty I bought. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to leave it at that. Andrew, I know you don't play online, so what's your first your your opinion? I guess it's a, a, of the franchise. I know you haven't played much more Modern Warfare 3, but uh, of the franchise itself, what's your um what are Yeah, your I, I've always enjoyed the, the the single players for what they are, and that it's sort of a... It's sort of an amusement park ride where you're just on rails going through the story, watching the yeah. explosions. Um, <laughs> and it's always satisfying shooting people. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I've yet to play the third one, but uh, the box looks good. It's okay. always <laughs> the, a good The box sign. does actually look good. Um, they've got yeah. a very good art team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but I think, I mean, it's a it's a gimmick that can only go so far. As far as the single player goes, I have no mm-hmm. idea what the multiplayer is all yeah, about. Yeah, I actually kind of want to talk about that. Um, the single player for Modern Warfare 3, I think, is absolute garbage. Um, I've maybe maybe it's just myself. I'm changing. I've always loved uh, the Call of Duty um, uh, single players, rather. And uh, just playing this one, I was just bored at every level. I there, I just didn't see the appeal. It was just, I, I guess, uh, the best way to phrase it is like this again. I mean, it's it's. I don't think we're seeing anything new. Um, what was your opinion of the single player? Anyone? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I, I guess they felt they really needed to wrap up uh, Modern Warfare 2 storyline. Mm-hmm. They didn't. I mean, that wasn't, I wasn't like on the edge of my seat. Like, what happens to Price and Soap? Oh no! Um, I think after Black Ops's uh, campaign, which was by far the best of all the Call of Duty campaigns, I think, mm-hmm. um, it just, it's, didn't, it wasn't, there was no reason for it to happen. It was just like, yeah. that movie sequel that was unnecessary. Yeah, uh, do you think that, um, I think Black Ops revolutionized, uh, the standard first person shooter single player where there's, the storyline was the driving factor in it. Um, do you think that's going to make, uh, Call of Duty change from now on? Um, Probably not. I think they're going to continue, since, didn't, um, I think I heard somewhere that Treyarch, like, lost the rights. No, so they're it's, not going to be making them or whatever? It's, it's a, it's a little different, it's more complicated, but it's, it's basically, they're going to continue making, a um, uh, Call of Duty every year, but it's more gonna be a trifecta of like Treyarch guys, Infinity Ward guys, and Sledgehammer guys. Um, oh. I don't. I'm. I'm pretty sure we're not gonna be seeing any more Treyarch only Call of Duties. But I, I know they brought on some Treyarch guys because um, and Sledgehammer was brought on mainly because Activision was totally pissed at uh, <laughs> at Infinity yeah. Ward. They thought they did a horrible job with Modern Warfare Two, but. Um, they did. Yeah. I think um, I I imagine that Treyarch uh, in the next game is going to be marginalized as far as mm-hmm. their contribution because like it's I I just imagine that they're going to be like the third wheel in this relationship. So mm-hmm. I think their influence because um, the um, Black Ops and World at War I thought were both really fun campaigns. Like the stories were interesting for some of the characters and like the mm-hmm. climactic moments were like at the end spoiler i guess at the end when you plant the russian flag um after like almost dying for the 900th time i just felt badass like, yeah finally but mm-hmm. i didn't get that with like any other campaign um i don't think back to what i was actually saying i don't think treyarch's actually going to be able to con uh contribute a whole lot to the next games uh campaign so i don't know if it's going to be as decent as black ops's was yeah. and it'll probably be more of infinity wars like michael bay-esque campaigns yeah um andrew uh, you play the most single player games um of anybody uh how do you think i know you haven't played modern warfare 3 but um how, how do you feel about the call of duty uh single players like how do they stand up to just other games in general if you're gonna buy a Call of Duty as a single player game and you just enjoy all types of games. Um, what did you think of Modern Warfare 2, I guess, is my question. What did you think of that single player? Um, I mean, it's putting me on the spot. I would say it doesn't stand up really as yeah. much because as far as the sheer amount of hours that it will provide you, Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a five-hour campaign. That's, that is yeah. true. That it's, is absolutely true. Uh, I mean, they're more... I think of them as pleasant distractions from other games. Like, okay. perhaps if I'm... If I just need to see stuff explode. Yeah, okay. and like, going back to the um, hours you're getting out of it, the Modern Warfare 2 campaign, or pretty much all the Modern Warfare campaigns, they're like four or five hours, and it's not that exciting... Portal 1 was like two and a half hours or three hours long, and it was incredible. 
So it's like they don't they don't manage their time in a way that's interesting the whole way through, and you're kind of like getting ripped off for the five hours you spend. True. Well, it's but it's look, not. But look it's, at, yes. Andrew. It's not. It's not super engaging gameplay. Is the yeah. problem? It's. I mean, a first-person shooter. Sure, you can get really creative with it, but they don't. So yeah. when <laughs> it's it's not it's like any other first-person shooter except probably up up the scale as far as uh, as far as the production value goes. I guess you would say. Yeah, but but look at a game like um, I, I like how I'm thinking. But I mean, look at look at Black Ops though. I mean, wh- how did you feel about Black Ops? I think that definitely, I think it took the the normal first-person shooter. Um, of Call of Duty and sort of, it, I think it stepped it up by far. But um, the time it takes you to complete it is still short. But do you think if they continue on a route where they're trying to produce stuff sort of like Black Ops? I mean, the storyline was unique, and I think that helped drive the story um, entirely. Because I mean, it's hard to make a first-person shooter. It can't just always be a guy trapped in a room having flashbacks. But um, do you think do you think that sort of game can stand up to other multiplayer ga- or not multi other single player games, or is it just? I would say, well, Black Ops I think is carried entirely by just that one mystery of what's mm. going on. But as yeah. far as the actual gameplay, it's really not much different than a modern warfare game. No, the gameplay opinion. is almost identical to all the other Call of Duty single players. Exactly. It's just it's just the mystery made you want to get through it faster, mm. and that was the compelling part. And you're right in that. Other games, games can't only rely on a compelling mystery like that, and they can't yeah. reuse the same formula of a guy trapped in a room. There has yeah. to be innovative gameplay with it. Exactly. Um, and speaking of a lack of innovative gameplay, like, I've noticed in all the Treyarch games that when, they tr- when you turn up the difficulty slider, yep. it doesn't actually make the game more challenging. Like, you don't have to use more strategy or think about how you play. The enemies just get auto aim and have triple health and throw like 900 grenades at you so every time i i try and beat a call of duty or a treyarch game on veteran all the way through (laughs) there's at least six separate points six separate points where i'm sitting behind like some sandbags or a box or something just hitting rb as fast as i can to throw back the unlimited amounts of grenades that are falling on my ass because like if i if i move i'm gonna get headshotted and if i (laughs) if i don't keep up the RB rhythm, then I'm going to explode. And it's not like my teammates mm-hmm. know how to kill enemies, because I guess they have some sort of N- NPC alliance, so they don't fight. I don't really understand it. Yeah, but. I mean, I understand, um, I guess, why they do stuff like that. I mean, there's there's such few mechanics inside of a, a game like uh, Call of Duty. Because, I mean, think about it. Jumping really doesn't exist in it. I mean, like, so the, <laughs> there aren't too many times where you need to, like, utilize the jumping feature in that game. Um, you pretty much have move, um, point, and shoot, and I guess their their idea is, well, let's just make it harder for them, or like, let's restrict the amount of time they'll be able to shoot, let's restrict how much damage their bullets do, and I mean, I guess that's their idea of making something harder, and I mean, it's, it's it, harder. It makes it harder in the, se- <laughs> in the sense that it's more difficult to get through the level, but it's also not fun yeah, to it, do. Agreed, well, but you're you're talking about grenades raining from the sky, and I'm thinking obviously you haven't seen the factual war movie Cloudy with a Chance of Shrapnel. <laughs> <laughs> because let me tell you, that that that's a that totally uncovers how many grenades fall from the sky in a war zone. Uh, okay, um, <laughs> that's fantastic. Let me let me bring this up really quick. Um, before we move on past Call of Duty, uh, a game. Okay, I think we can all agree here that, that Call of Duty hinges on multiplayer. Yep. Um, and and we're sort of saying how we're sort of getting bored with it, I guess. Um, it's sort of like the same thing over and over. Um, it's not it's nothing really new, and the single player is is really, like, you, there's no reason to buy it. You wouldn't buy it for the single player, period. Let me bring up a game like Super Smash Brothers. Um if you've played through the um, Subspace Emissary, I think it was called, that sort of single-player adventure, it was about the same length as a Call of Duty game. It um, took about maybe seven hours to complete, and it was the worst experience of, of or worst experience of my life, period. But I think that game, games like um, Super Smash Brothers, 
which is is I would I think everyone can agree is based around multiplayer, mm. although not online, more with friends. Um, I think that the lasting power of that game is is astronomical. I mean, <laughs> it's it's unbelievable how many people will still play that game, and it's I think four four years old now, three years old. Mm. I don't know, but who's playing the the Call of Duty four from four years ago? All the people who hate Modern Warfare Three <laughs> and also hate Modern Ex- Warfare Two and Black Ops. Exactly, but um, like my my point is like, what is what are they doing wrong? Like, why are we losing interest in these in in Modern Warfare when I mean it, it's I, we're looking at a really rough formula here though. Um, <laughs> it, it's sort of a similar experience as um as something like Super Smash Brothers. Do you think it has something to do with it being online? Or being more frustrating, or or do you think first person shooters are just slowly working their way out of our our little gaming subculture? What are I th- think the difference is Modern Warfare is more of a hardcore multiplayer experience, while Super Smash Brothers is casual, mm-hmm. and people aren't looking for the same kind of experience out of a casual multiplayer game. They're looking for the sort for something they they can play with their friends. And the other difference is there's one Super Smash Brothers every, you know, five or six years mm-hmm. where they put out a new Call of Duty every year. So, I mean, people aren't playing Modern, Forf- Modern Warfare 1 anymore because there's been two more games that have come out. Or two more yeah. Modern Warfare games and then also two more Treyarch games in between. Mm. Yeah, so that's there's true. Just, that's true. There's more of a momentum with the Call of Duty games, whereas, you know, Super yeah. Smash Brothers is is there for the long haul. But, Stuff actually feels fresh when they yeah. update it, as opposed to just, like, looking slightly different. And there's also no Zero Suit St- Samus in Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> that, that is true. Um, yeah, I, I can see where, where everyone's coming from with that. Um, but um, just really quick, back to this topic. What do you guys think about first-person shooter games? I know, like, I think I think literally they were all the craze. Like, it, it's it's almost crazy. I think a lot of people who didn't play first-person shooters, like, started playing first-person shooters with Call of Duty 4, and I, I think I think we're going on a downward spiral, but I'm not actually sure. Maybe it's just, like, me, personally, but how does everyone still feel about first-person shooters? Are, is, are, they, are, they, are they working themselves out? I think, I think so many people got on the bandwagon, but maybe have realized that there really isn't that much... Um, difference maybe or as as much like variance through different I think, games. I think because uh, there's been so many first person shooters and so many of them have just been like meh that if, if first person shooters want to survive and people want there to be more first person shooters they have to be innovative or interesting or have some sort of uh, something that makes them stand out like um, I'm looking at my desktop right now and two first-person shooters I see that have just been really interesting and original were, like, Bioshock and Left 4 Dead. Like, they're both first-person shooters. Mm -hmm. They're not similar at all, but they both have something that makes them unique and interesting and makes them worth playing uh, besides just uh, pretending to be somebody else and shooting things. So, like, when you make something new and interesting, then yeah. that, I, mean, I think that allows it. Maybe, so. maybe that's the problem. When I think of Modern Warfare 3, I'm not thinking it's the same game as, like, as Bioshock, you know? I mean, it technically, they're, they're both first-person shooters, but I guess maybe we're miscategorizing here. Maybe we're... Maybe the whole first-person shooter is, um... We gotta move away from the Modern Warfares and the battlefields and look at the wider array of of everything I guess. I mean like Fallout 3 is mm. first person and it's a shooter, but there's no way you could ever categorize it anywhere near Modern Warfare 3. Um, right. So maybe I think maybe I think FPS is just too general and um well, I think in the Modern Warfare category of first person shooter mm-hmm. that you're talking about, those types of games to me could benefit from sort of pulling back and just going back to basics. Where if you look at, if you go back and play a game like Doom, it's a totally different experience than, mm-hmm. you know, where the maps are totally, like, just very simple, but at the same time make you have to play very tactically. And, mm-hmm. like, 
you know, for someone like me who didn't play Doom, it it's one of the hardest things in the world to not die in mm. that game. <laughs> just because I'm I'm so used to being spoon fed, being spoon fed as far as single player where to go mm-hmm. and what to do, and as far as multiplayer, it's just I'm not used to not being distracted by crazy map designs. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um. Well, let's let's bring up another reason why finishing uh, Modern Warfare Three was nearly impossible. Um, it's because Skyrim came out. Um, yep. <laughs> Skyrim. It, what do you guys think about Skyrim? First of all, Andrew, I don't have you played. Yeah, I you've think played. the box is very good looking. Oh, you haven't. Okay. Well, um, I've, I started a character, and so far, so great. Good. Okay. Um, well, let's let's keep away from any spoilers here, especially for anyone listening. Um, Eli, what did you what did you think of of Skyrim? Um, well, I would be playing it right now if it weren't for this. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's awesome. I loved Oblivion. I love all the fallouts. Or I love the first person fallouts. I haven't actually gotten around to playing the, uh, the top down mm-hmm. ones, but they look interesting. Um, so it's Oblivion, but way better and way prettier. I love it. Um, it's fantastic. I get my ass kicked by frost mages but other than that it's really fun so skyrim's awesome yeah um i absolutely agree i think in most aspects it's much better than oblivion there's absolutely no reason why anyone who even remotely liked oblivion would not get skyrim uh it's it's absolutely fantastic i think it is lacking in the side quest um department not that there's not a lot of side quests to do just that, um... It seems like there's way too many miscellaneous quests. I have, yeah, like, yeah. 38 mm-hmm. miscellaneous quests and, like, 15 side quests. I'm, exactly. I, I don't know what to do. I think Oblivion, um, the main story was compelling. Well, somewhat compelling. But I think the Thieves Guild and the Mages Guild and the Fighters those, Guild... That's where the, I the think, fun was. Yeah, I think that those were, if, like, possibly even more compelling than the main story was. They absolutely but were. in Skyrim, uh, the main story is really what is... Um, the most compelling part and the other stuff sort of feels like things you do to get certain items or things you do just to advance a certain skill or you just do it because you want to do it um, i felt that way about the thieves guild the thieves guild felt really oh, repetitive yeah. thieves but guild. um the dark brotherhood i liked a lot oh dark brotherhood uh, they, they played um, down the like the contract kills where it's just like you, or um like the the side quest kills where you just talk to guild master gives you mm-hmm. quests murder this guy get leveled gold rinse and repeat like there's like this story when i saw never mind when the <laughs> yeah exactly never mind <laughs> it um, was each every evolution of the dark brotherhood mini story i was like oh wow i didn't expect that yeah. or wow that's really cool yeah so, and then at the end of the dark brotherhood that's when you can start doing all the yeah the contracts. Boring, rinse and repeat yeah I um think. but have you have you done the mages guild uh barely even started it. Yeah, but I, like you're already to... on you're already on this isn't really a spoiler i don't think um but i think we all know that when you complete um pretty much any guild uh you pretty much become a, either a main member or the guild leader or the guild master of the yeah. um of the guild you're, you're working with literally if you've started the um the mages guild you're already on the final quest and it's kind of outrageous there's literally only one quest for the mages guild and your, uh, your mic's being all like fuzzy right now but i know what you're saying i apologize um let me see if i can fix that i don't know if that's going to be an issue yeah i, I haven't I've... i did not hear the fuzz so okay you oh that's probably on my end because now you're okay. doing it too my bad <laughs> that's okay um yeah but basically it, it it felt it didn't even feel rushed because it took the same amount of time as anything else but i mean it was really just one straight line um and there weren't really any smaller quest it was just hey what's up you want to join oh no the world's gonna end now you're the leader and it's sort of it was just sort of weird that they <laughs> that they sort of neglected it when the mages guild was was so long in um, Oblivion, I thought it was it was amazing too. It wasn't a boring long. It was just like a, I just thought it was great. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, yes. Sorry. I also thought the uh, the Mage's Guild questline in Oblivion was really long, but I didn't think it was that interesting to be honest. Like, well, it didn't. I wasn't I wasn't excited to find out 
to get my next quest to see what I was going to be doing. It's just, okay, point. I, I also just don't like going into Alien Dungeons. That might be me. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't that. like that too much. Um, yeah, it, I... I still liked it. Um, I don't think it was super. I don't. I don't think it was as repetitive as much as it was. Just like there was just so much you had to do, um, which I, I think it makes me think. Um, I don't know. It feels real to me. With uh, with the thieves guild, the plot points happen pretty fast early on. In Oblivion or Skyrim? Skyrim. Um, sorry. In Skyrim, the the thieves guild quests happen pretty fast. I mean, you're not really doing any small tasks. Um, until you get right before you're going to be get made a uh, guild master, which felt really weird. It felt a little backwards, actually, to be honest. Um, I was doing a lot of the um, the things from, like, Delvin, Mallory, and Vex as soon as I started. Oh, yeah. See, I haven't completed didn't... it yet. I just, I'm on, oh, like, yeah. the second to last quest in the Thieves Guild, but yeah. I can, I see what you mean. Yeah, see, you don't actually have to do any of the quests from those two people in, until you want to become the guild master. And then it's like, wait, why am I doing these now? And it's, it's yeah, don't you have to like, do like sixty of them or like thirty of them or something? Um, it's it's more. Um, you have to do five um, for each city. For each of like five cities, I think. But you're not. It, it doesn't like. It doesn't tell you which city you're going to until after you accept it. So what I ended up doing was just like dropping quests of the cities I've already completed. Um, uh, it's, it's. I think it's about thirty quests in all you have to do. But the, the quests are are short and repetitive and annoying. But it's like I was yeah, already pickpocket or I already did the major quest of the thieves guild. So I was just felt a little cheated that I had to do the uh, the. Yeah, it's like quests. you're just, you're almost the guild master now. Go pick up my laundry. Like exactly. Just... Yeah, it, it felt it felt a little weird. But um, overall, Skyrim a uh, huge improvement on Oblivion, I think, um, mm -hmm. and just really great. Buy it. Yes, buy it exactly. And it has one good looking box. <laughs> oh, such a sexy the, box. The best looking box. Um, actually, I'm in no position to say that. Andrew, is it the best looking box? It's a pretty good looking box. <laughs> okay, um, moving on. Uh, I guess we'll touch briefly on Halo Combat Evolved. Um, what is everyone's thoughts on that? I think it, I think it's cool. I'm it's out. Halo. Yeah, it, it's Halo. I'm like it's certainly. I mean, it's just Reach multiplayer, so it's not anything. Um, exciting along with that, but Halo 1 was probably one of the, the better... Actually, I'm surprised we didn't even think about Halo when we were talking about first-person shooters a little while oh, ago. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll talk about them now. Uh, I think Halo 1 had one of the greatest uh, campaigns, well, more memorable campaigns for me at least, um, as far as playing experience, and I think it was a lot of fun. I think Halo is kind of dead as far as campaign is. I think Reach was awful. I think Halo 3 was terrible. Didn't actually play ODST. And I thought Halo 2 was... was I could feel the bridge uh, leading into the... These campaigns are going to get repetitive and bad. Um, Damn. What did you guys... What did you guys think about these... Uh, this Halo series, I guess, is what we're talking about now? Um, I liked Halo 1. I thought it was fun. Mm -hmm. um, but... I think the reason I like Halo 2 so much better is because Halo 2 was the first one that I really got that, um, like, couch multiplayer experience with. Because people always talk about, like, uh, like Magnums and Lockout or whatever. Not Lockout. I don't even remember the maps. Like, <laughs> uh, the, the sort of couch multiplayer experience from Halo 1 and how much fun that was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really have that. I played Halo 2 more. So I got that same experience on Halo 2, which is why I like it so much better. But um, the campaigns, it, I thought 1 and 2 were both pretty equally good. 3 was decent. ODST was kind of boring. And Reach, I didn't really yeah, have an opinion I, on. I think I, I think I, I made it sound like I didn't like Halo 2's campaign, but I, I did. <laughs> you <laughs> made it just... sound like you hated all of them except no, for 1. I loved, I, I, no, Halo 2 was good. Um... Just, but like, a lot better. looking back on it, I'm like, I can see the descent, I guess. Like, I think Halo 2 had um, a lot of... Um... Was Halo 2 the one where at the end you're, like, in the Warthog and, like, you're on the floor that's falling apart, like that Icebreaker game? Or is that 3? That's a great question, and that's why I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's number 2. Yeah, I think it's okay. number 2 also, but, um... Yeah, it's, a, it's sort of... Yeah, um, but yeah, this is Halo 1 that came out, Anniversary Edition, upgrade, updated graphics, so, um, I think, I, I like what they did, I appreciate it, it was good, 
yeah, like that couch experience you're talking about, I had with Halo One, and it was fantastic, and I love Halo One. I think Andrew, Andrew, yeah, Andrew and I beat Halo One's campaign together in like one night, was it? That was fun. That was fantastic. One night. <laughs> one night. One magical night. Um, <laughs> fantastic. Let's not talk about the rest of that night. Um, uh, just mm-hmm. a couple more here. Um, Rayman Origins. <laughs> awesome. I played it for 10 minutes and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rayman is fantastic. It's... Andrew, why don't you go ahead, Mr. Single Player over here. I don't know. I would say that what makes the new Rayman so good is that it it captures the, the original feel of Rayman 1, but mm-hmm. while not feeling as outdated as Rayman 1. Mm-hmm. Which I think what is is the real key if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do a game that sort of, Throw sort of runs on one. nostalgia, yeah. Because I I compare it to the new Donkey Kong Country game that came out last year, where that game didn't have any of the same feeling of the original Donkey Kong Countries. Uh-huh. It was just it was sort of like a a deformed clone, that <laughs> that you could tell it was like, it was like an an alien imposter that I knew something <laughs> was off. Whereas yeah. with with Rayman, when you're playing it, you feel like you're playing the first Rayman, but mm-hmm. but updated. Yeah, um, I think the multiplayer aspect of Rayman is amazing, but <laughs> but here's here's an important but. I think Rayman One was fantastic. It was a fantastic game to watch, and I think even with multiplayer, um, the new Rayman is also a fantastic game to watch too. Um, yeah. Over it, it and it's it's I, it kept the original art style. Um, it feels it's it feels really good. I mean I don't know how else to describe it, but Rayman is like a lot of fun. Um, mm-hmm. It could be frustrating by yourself because um, I guess the way it works is it's, it's really hard to get a game over, I guess, or to die um, when you're with multiple people because you can resurrect each other. Yeah. But by yourself, I can imagine a lot of frustration. But frustration was also amazing in Rayman 1. Um, <laughs> that was part of the experience. And uh, Rayman is... I'm actually surprised. I didn't... With, with all the Rayman stuff that's coming out, like Raving Rabbits or whatever, I don't even know what that game is. Rabbits. Rabbits, sorry. <laughs> it has rabbits in it, so like... <laughs> whatever. But those sort of games, I think, are nothing like the Rayman that I loved and grew up on. Well, not grew up on, but played when I was young. Because they really only made... Was it... Did they make a Rayman 2 that was good? I don't remember. I've, I've only played Rayman yeah, 1. Yeah, <laughs> I've only played Rayman 1 also. So, um, But yeah, it, it's it's good. It's fantastic. Um, it's excellent. <laughs> and lastly... Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I actually have Uncharted 3 here, which I forgot about. Um, Uncharted 3, we haven't played too much of. But, We're on, um, like, chapter 5 or 6. Yeah. We, we play it as a group. It's, yeah. like, our thing with all the Uncharted games. We play it all exactly. sitting in the Andrew's den or big room, whatever. <laughs> yes. And um, Uncharted 3, I'm, I'm pretty psyched for. Um, it looks like it's going to be a cinematic experience of awesomeness. That's all I've got to say. Um, More or less, yeah. Yeah, Andrew, how do you feel? You're the only one who's actually played it right now, I think? Me, Kamal, um, and Dom, I think, were there. Uh, no, no, but I mean, like, touched it. Touched it and played it. <laughs> Eli yeah. got his hands on it uh, for for a little bit, but not too yeah. long. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah. it, it, it plays and feels just like Uncharted 2, but it's just a new story, and I'm yeah. looking forward to finding out what goes on. Yeah, it looks, it looks great. I mean, um, Uncharted is definitely one of those games that I don't mind spending multiple hours just watching because it's it's fan it's a it's it's I don't know how to describe it other than it's a jolly old time with your friends. Um, what's what's unique about Uncharted also is that it's one of the few games that to me actually makes me have any sort of connection with the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, just as far as the third game pretty much begins with you playing Nathan as a kid. And, and I thought you, it like, was really find cool. The relationship between him and Sully, and it's like, it's really. Yeah, and in any other game, it would be something I just wouldn't care at all to see. But in this game, it's actually something where I'm really glad they put it in there, and it it really it. It just sort of deepens your, your uh, 
your general uh, perception of them, which I yeah, think... I find like a lot of things that try and have this sort of um, like surrogate father relationship with what, like between an older character and a younger character. It just feels like phony, and he's just like uh, and a really unhip like doting old man. But in this game, he he he's he's part of the action, so he doesn't seem so inept and useless, and yep. he's funny and. They're, I mean, they play off each other well. I know yeah, they're not real people, really, but they yeah. play off each other well, and it's fun. Yeah, it's... Well, yeah. Everything, everything rings true, and it's in no small part to the script and the voice actors, which makes just everything feel very natural and how real people would interact with each other. Would you yeah. expect anything less from the creators of Crash Bandicoot? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no. not, to be honest. Um... <laughs> Yeah, Uncharted Three. Uh, it's it, we we haven't played super tons of Buy it, it, but there's no reason at all. I'm like I'm on the edge of my seat just thinking about what's gonna happen next, and I I'm I don't even know when the next time I'm gonna be able to see it is. It's really good. <laughs> it's just fantastic. Um, all right, and lastly for to, to just to wrap up the the whole holiday season, um, Skyward Sword. Um, now, Andrew actually just beat this. I observed. Um, what did you think, Andrew? You've, you've beat it all. <laughs> yes. What are your thoughts? Um, Skyward Sword is a game that had a lot of hype about being the best Zelda game. Uh, and I'm going to throw in the phrase for some reason in there, because <laughs> I, I don't think it's the best Zelda game at all, but it was very fun. And it, it being a Zelda game is still a very good one. And uh, I think uh, certainly there's a lot of entertaining aspects in there of of the sort of the conceit that it's a prequel. So they throw lots of little tidbits in there of where sort of the iconic imagery of Zelda came from mm -hmm. as far as uh, the story of the universe. Which, to be fair, the stories in the Zelda games are never that deep or engaging. But it, it's, it's cool to see. Uh, but the real stars are the the puzzles and they were good that's good um yeah i don't know why they thought they had to run an ad campaign challenging ocarina of time um i think people were gonna buy a zelda game because <laughs> zelda people say that ocarina of time is the best one but i haven't been let down ever yeah i think that's fair i mean i didn't really play twilight princess to be honest but but <laughs> that's because I hate the Wii. That's a sort. It's another story, um, <laughs> another story for another time. But I think I don't think anyone's ever been let down by a Zelda game where they're like, "Man, this is nothing like Ocarina of Time." I think everyone's always thinking, "Well, I like Zelda. This is these are good games." So, um, but yeah, they did try to challenge it, and um, yeah, why don't why don't we talk about Hero Mode, Andrew? Do you want to oh, talk about yes. Hero Mode? Hero Mode, the. <laughs> The, the greatest thing, the greatest addition of the, the, of the game. Um, here's a warning to anybody who hasn't beaten Zelda yet. Uh, you're going to beat Zelda, and you're going to be high off of the adrenaline of beating Zelda and not dying from the boss fight. And you're going to be feeling really good and up for anything. And the game is going to say, hey, guess what? You're feeling really good right now. I bet you want to try this thing called Hero hero Mode. I hear it's really cool. And you're going to be like, oh, going. Hero Mode? What's that? That sounds awesome. And you're going to be all you're gonna be all for it. And then it's going to give you the option to either say no thanks or bring it on. It's and haunted you. you be, and you are going to feel so, so uplifted. You're going to say bring it on. And then it's going to delete your file and start you over <laughs> on Hero Mode. And you're going to say what? And then the guy's going to come up to you and he's going to say, now you lose health twice as quickly. Have fun. And you're going to have to start over and you're not going to be able to play your file anymore. And it's going to be hard. Oh my God. This was literally the funniest moment I've had in a while. It specifically tells you that if you enter hero mode, all your save file will be deleted. But um, I think when you right after you beat a game, that's not the appropriate time to ask. Um they need to give you time to think about it. You need to yeah. come off of your high and first. And it, it shouldn't say, it should It should probably just say, like, yes or no, not bring it on. Because yeah. it, it felt like a challenge also, but it, it, it was it was quite hilarious how that ended up happening. But, um, yeah, if you want to do uh, hero mode, make sure you finished everything that you wanted to finish in uh, the normal mode. Because it will absolutely just delete it. 
<laughs> I don't actually see the reason why they had to delete it, but they did. Um, yeah, all right, that is that. Now, um, let's just talk briefly on this. We just talked about Skyward Sword and Uncharted 3. And Uncharted 3, like we talked about, is going to be one of those games where we're going to be able to watch it and, and love it, absolutely. And feel like we experienced it as much as anyone who played it. Um, somebody back me up on this. Say yes, please. Uh, I agree. <laughs> absolutely. Okay, great. Um, let's talk about voice acting in video games. Um, Skyward Sword had little to no voice acting. It's the sort of voice acting that's like, not real words. Uh, same with Rayman Origins. Um, <laughs> but that's that's a little more silly. That, that that That's more true to form, like, I'm glad that they did that only because, like, these, these characters are ridiculous. And Rayman is really about making no sense, so it really helps uh, that aspect. But um, I guess what I want to talk about is, is voice acting necessary in a video game? In, in any video game at all? Or, like, what... What video games is voice acting even necessary in? Um, anybody want to comment on this? Um, I, I'm almost 100% of the time prefer having voice acting because the alternative to voice acting is usually like the JRPG scrolling text with like boobly 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 boob going over it and that just annoys the hell out of me. Mm -hmm. So I think when voice acting is done well, it's, it really, really adds to a game and like it is makes the experience that much more Cinematic. rich or interesting. But when it's yeah, yeah. crappy, it just screws the whole thing up yeah. so badly. It um, just sucks. Like, it just, it's such a bummer when the voice acting is crap. Yeah, in like a game like Zelda, do, do you really want to put voice to Link and Zelda? Is that is that a smart move? Because if, if, if one person is horrible in that game that will forever be known as the game with the horrible voice acting. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts, Andrew? Uh, I think a lot of it, a lot of times it's a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. it, it depends on, if you're talking about Zelda, I, I like that it doesn't have voice acting. Because even though they try to give, there's, they try to give Zelda a plot, and there's some, sometimes there's lengthy dialogue scenes, Zelda's really not about the plot. Um, I mean, as I said before, it's about the puzzles, and I'm glad that they don't focus, they don't try to spread themselves too thin and focus on getting good voice actors and having the risk of having a bad voice acting performance that will detract from the game. Mm -hmm. I like that they just say, all right, we're going to make it text. We're going to throw in some, like, some screams and, like, sighs and no's every once in a while with voices. But, mm -hmm. but otherwise, it's just going to be text. And then you can scroll through as fast as you want to get back to the puzzles. Okay. Um, and along the lines of this, like, Uncharted 3, if it had, uh, no voice acting, would... I, I don't think I would play it. Yeah, that, it, it, that's sort of where I'm well, at. It's, I mean... it's a cinematic game, and if you have crappy voice acting, it's like watching a crappy B-movie. Like, sure, it's entertaining because it's so bad, but it's not like, but wow, this is amazing. I don't it's, even mean crappy voice acting, I mean zero, if it's all text. Yeah, because then you're breaking up all the action to mm. read text. It's like watching a foreign film, and you have to watch the sub <laughs> or read the subtitles. Like it's doable, and you can do it, but it's just it kind of cheapens it because then you're you're not looking at what's going on. You're reading, which but, is why I think it's a case by case basis mm -hmm. where the developers have to look at the game they're making and ask themselves what they want to focus on and what they want the strengths to be. Because mm -hmm. Uncharted, Uncharted's all about mimicking the tropes and sort of stylistic elements of movies so yeah. then you have to have voice acting that was one of the things they had to have said all right we're gonna have to have voice acting and it's gonna have to not be, gonna it's, it's not gonna evoke the the movie experience that we're going for mm -hmm. yeah um but whereas if you're thinking like like a, a pokemon game then no that's that's not a game that needs voice acting that's i mean yeah it, it's whatever whatever the game needs i think is what but do you like uh, Eli said, um, we wouldn't play Uncharted if it didn't have the voice acting because the whole point of it is that it's super cinematic. Yeah. It's um, it's great. But do you think that means Uncharted Three is just a bad video game, or has? Uh, let me rephrase. It has bad gameplay. No. Or well, I mean, it's 
the, the gameplay gets the job done, is what I think. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a pretty linear gameplay experience that carries you between the plot points, but it does it in a, in a way that's different from Call of Duty, where it doesn't seem like a rail shooter, even though, like, the, the climbing paths are very straightforward and stuff. It, it's, it does it well. Like, they don't, they don't make it seem like you're, you have tunnel vision in the, in the story. It's, it, I don't know. It, the gameplay carries itself carries the game between the cutscenes in a way that works really well is what I'm trying to say okay so yeah um, so I guess what everyone thought is that it's case by case um, do you think I don't think there's that many games that mimic um, well I don't want to say mimic Uncharted but are like Uncharted I mean like are, are there that many games that um... that Tomb Raider game really ripped and started off <laughs> yeah no, I mean, I wouldn't call Tomb Raider, um, I would, I really wouldn't say Tomb Raider is on the level of Uncharted, um, only for just what they're, what they are, I mean, Tomb Raider is a single player game that was, um, okay to watch, but I think Uncharted 3, it, it breaks through, like, any barrier of watching a game and makes it as good as watching a movie, um, are there other games out there now that you guys can think of um, that are as fun to watch as Uncharted 3? Hmm. Or do you think that maybe more companies should be moving towards this? Or um, if any game would be better at, like, um, would be better off going the cinematic route? Um, I can't really think of anything that I, that I, I like just watching other people play Mm -hmm. um besides the uncharted games like i'm looking at my my steam library and i just don't really see anything like that it's 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 it's, it's a it's a rare quality to have a game that's as much fun to watch as it Mm -hmm. is to play at the same time i don't want all games to be like uncharted i think uncharted is a special case where it's the one time I would allow a video game to to dip so heavily into another medium's territory where they're taking so much from film. But I don't want all games to start mimicking film. I want games to be games mm-hmm. for the most yeah, part. Yeah, because then they lose their interactive quality and they're hardly games. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. How do you guys feel about um, bringing professional directors um, and, and screenwriters onto... Uh, game design teams i would Um, say having professional writers is a great idea because then your dialogue isn't absolute crap mm -hmm. um if you're going for a a a more cinematic game yeah even if if it's not more cinematic even if it's just like a story driven game having good writer having good writers makes a lot of difference i don't i don't know about other uh, film professions, how they would impact it, but I would say solid writers are really important. Well, I think with something like Uncharted, um, I think the the, I guess directing is sort of where um, a lot of a lot of angles play in because it, you have, I guess a game is is a way to um, make a movie, but it's you have even more freedom. It's it's more like an animated uh, movie, but some like. It's just very interactive, I guess, as far as Uncharted Three goes. So I think directing could um, would definitely play a, a particular role. I don't. You wouldn't need more than one director or anything. I mean, there are already game directors, but um, I mean, a directing could play a part when they're doing that. Like when games rely like really heavily on that mocap stuff. Mm-hmm. Like if if they're if the entire game is made up of um, their actors doing mocap, then I think the director could lend his hand pretty well, but I, mm-hmm. I don't see how outside of that he would be really relevant. I don't oh, know, I'm just, I'm just trying to imagine games directed by by like Quentin Tarantino or, <laughs> uh, or Wes Anderson. I'm just trying to imagine yeah, what they I, would be like, and I but, find it hilarious. <laughs> but but I'm, not, I'm not saying like every game, I'm just saying like a, maybe a particular type of game, like Uncharted is unique in, a, the, in the aspect that it's so cinematic. Um, maybe something like that could work, but, um, I think we touched on that enough. Oh, and I was going to bring up that Heavy Rain, um, I guess that was a more cinematic game as well. Um, that, yeah, that was, that was actually pretty fun some, to watch. Um, and, uh, L.A. Noir, 
I actually haven't played it or seen it at all, but it, it seems was, like... That would not... It's not fun really? to watch. Is it no. not? It, it it just seems like... It's also like, not very fun to play. <laughs> it's, it, it just seems like a sort of... Um, it seems like it could be taking a direction where it would be fun to watch. Maybe they did it wrong or... Um, it's like watching... You know how... Um, Watching Grand Theft Auto can be interesting if you do like really outrageous stuff like uh-huh. jumping out of helicopters and crap. But it, or imagine you're playing Grand Theft Auto, but you're only following the law, and that's broken up by watching mock job interviews. Is basically <laughs> watching L.A. Noir is like. <laughs> well, okay, then maybe that's definitely not um, <laughs> one of those games. Um, but yeah, do you do you guys feel as though we've we've touched? Everyone has said everything that needs to be said i feel so touched um i would also like to bring up um Mm -hmm. games that don't really have like a really strong story but have really great voice acting like um uh i like left for dead magica orcs must die and team fortress 2 are all pretty decent examples of times where the, the story isn't so important, but the voice acting really enriches the experience. experience. Mm-hmm. Like in Team Fortress 2 and Left 4 Dead, um, just the quips that the characters belt out make it, like, it's just, for Team Fortress 2, they're funny, and then for Left 4 Dead, you're like, oh, crap, we're getting eaten. Like, it's it's adds to that, and then with Orcs Must Die and Magicka, it's just um, weird characters saying silly things that make you, like, it reminds you, oh, yeah, I'm not supposed to be taking this that seriously. And yeah. Agreed. Makes it more enjoyable, I think. Yeah, I mean, voice acting is a good way, um, I guess, to enhance a game. I don't think it can really make a game. Like, with Magicka, you have the really fun multiplayer gameplay. Um, yeah. I think pretty much just... I mean, the gameplay is designed to be fun multiplayer gameplay. So, I mean, <laughs> that sort of game can be fun to play. But um, voice acting definitely enriches most games. There are definitely points where... Um, voice acting is not always uh necessary or even yeah. needed but um yeah that is going to wrap up buttersworth brigade for this week um unless anyone else has anything to say nope nope all right fantastic um if you guys would like to send in any type of um segment or request for what we should talk about in an upcoming podcast Please send any of that, or comments or questions, anything at all, to wearepronto at gmail.com. Um, pretty much every email will be replied to. Um, we will tell you if we hate your idea and we hate you and hate everything about you. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, please send in any questions, comments you have. Um, we are actually, for the time being, um, if you would like to be on the show and think that you have unique opinions or something to talk about, you are very much welcome to send a, send us an email about it. We will definitely consider anyone who wants to be on the show with us. This is pretty much just an opinion-based show, so um, you don't really need to have a wealth of knowledge. We can explain any topics to you want. But um, if you are going to do something like that, please send in a topic you'd like to talk about as well. Um, that'll help us out and give us, um, I guess, a plane of reference um, so that we know what you are interested in and what we'd like to talk about. But uh, other than that, that wraps up the show. Um, Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, that's about all. Cue outro music.